your favorite dinosaurs are back. And they've been in training. All aboard as Moonbeam Entertainment takes you on a wild ride with Prehysteria 2. Dynamite director Albert Band engineers a fantastic adventure. The script is what attracted me to actually direct it. I thought it was great. It's very, very zany, but it's zany within the content of uh, children's stories. And as such, it didn't go too overboard. Uh, I treated it uh, as a fantasy because we did things uh, in every department that were unrealistic and yet it, uh, it, it worked very well. Like every time we saw the kid practically, he wore a different outfit. Hold it right there. It ain't for you, punk! Guys, careful. He's got a comb. Yeah. Outrageous sets like Brendan's bedroom okay. contribute to the fantasy. I can't believe you live here. I didn't expect the bedroom to be so big. You know how you can kind of picture things before you actually get there? I imagined a pretty well-sized room, you know, with just a couple of video games, a bunk bed with a slide down there and stuff. And I come here and they have all this trampoline and stuff, and it's like, oh, how cool. Yeah, I'm so lucky. Uh, I was shocked when I saw my room for the first time, even, even before they had all the stuff in it. I mean, I went in and it was like three times the size of our living room. And then they had all the stuff in it. It was, it was even more amazing. I mean, they got the trampoline and the pool table, drum set. The kids got everything. It's amazing. Okay. Kevin, why don't you step on in, buddy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. It's, it's your turn, of course. <laughs> I would trade anything in the world for a bedroom like that. Listen, I'll trade you anything in this room for those dinosaurs. Anything? All of it, if you want. And action. One, two, three. A fun place to perform in doesn't mean less work for the young actors. <laughs> I get here, usually I get into wardrobe and then go and get my makeup on. And then if I have a scene, I'll go straight there to do a blocking rehearsal. And uh, if I don't have a scene, I'll just go back to school. And if I do, I'll do the blocking rehearsal and then go back to school. And then I'll go back for the scene and just basically go back from rehearsals to school to doing the scene to school to rehearsals to school. So I have to go to school in between scenes. And I'm supposed to have about three hours of school every day. And if I get more, I'd get to bank that time for the next day if I want. Jennifer on the trampoline. Kevin goes to school. Kevin goes to school. Miss Winters, you can forget about sending Brendan to military school. The kids aren't the only ones doing the learning in this film. Get your elbows off the table, young man. I mean, I start off being an adult, I get to at least finish the picture being a kid. And I play Miss Winters, who's a governess, and uh, she's uh, a meanie. But there's hope for her. And you, at the end of the film, you can see that she's breaking through. Stop him! Stop it! Like all movies, not everything is as it appears. I wear a wig most of the time, but I'm bald. And it took two hours for the girls to do me. I looked as infrequently as possible into the mirror. Now, actually, it wasn't too terrible until they added some stray hairs. And that's really freaky to me. I mean, well, it wasn't great, but it wasn't helped by the stray hairs <laughs> floating around. Gotcha. I can't help it. I feel sorry for the little best. I second that emotion. And I play the character of Mr. Hero, or Mr. Hero, uh, I know, the accent's gone now, but <laughs> I don't know anything about plants. Who's saying that? I have a very good ear for accents and stuff, so I had to listen to an old tutorial tape, and in it, the man was speaking Russian. No, he was a Russian. He was speaking English with a Russian accent, and that's the one that I kept on listening to get into the accent. This is impossible. Oh. What's that? 
Conducting the dinos through their encore performance is Creature King Mark Rappaport. This is uh, the baby T-Rex from Prehistory 2. And this is the big biting T-Rex. <laughs> but actually, this would hurt. This guy bites very hard and it hurts me. Well, this is as simple as it gets. It looks very simple, but it works very well. And there's, a, there's the same, the mechanism that's here is actually the same mechanism that's up here. It just, that allows us to pull the trigger. These insert puppets okay, also help make the, the full cable puppets look alive because they look like you can do more. There's four different puppets for the T-Rex. There's a cable puppet which is very involved. There's his head, but the biting head. There's a stop motion puppet. And the other puppet we have is a stunt puppet. He's the one who gets beat up. And that's, that's a rough job. The T-Rex even does the foxtrot. And most of our puppets are cable operated and radio controlled. You have around 40 to 50 cables going for each puppet. And 40 or 50 cables makes a stack of wires or cables this thick coming out that puppet. Because you have five people in very complicated rigs with many, many cables, you have to hide these people throughout the set. And that's a set decorator's nightmare. The grips and the, the carpenters trying to cut holes, hide us under floors, hide us behind walls. And you see characters walking around, you see the actor walking by, you see the puppet in the same shot. You realize there's five or six puppeteers hiding in that same area, and you can't see them. The Dino's phenomenal puppetry amazed their co-stars. I was surprised actually they, they could just do it with the little hand control thing. They pulled this little loop with the string attached to it and it makes the tail and, and uh, arms and legs and move the and the head and the eyes blink. Oh, oh, oh. Here's another one. At first I thought they were going to be hard, you know, like, like mold, I mean plaster, you know. And they, they're really soft, like spongy almost. There's an old saying, you don't want to be with kids, you don't want to be with animals, you get upstaged every time. Look, it's totally real. Of course it is, Brandon. They're made that way. <laughs> yeah, kids and animals. And I got them both in this one. Well, sir, ma'am, I think you've completely misjudged the enemy. Our intelligence informs us that you've been invaded by ghosts. Ow! Just find it. Nada. Brandon! There's no stopping the dinos when they get mischievous. Hysteria 2. A trainload full of fun for the whole family. Let's Watch go there. Over here. Wrap it up yeah. and get the net. We were right. Duck Winston's certifiable. She thinks we're looking for Bigfoot or something. Wait! You can't stop now! We're about to discover something that's never been seen before. Yeah. It's the find I've been waiting for all my life. It will prove my theories are correct. Oh. My character was so much fun to play. Doc Winston, who, who uh, Michael and I, bless his heart, made into the most eccentric sort of combination of uh, Indiana Jones and and uh, one of those English botanist ladies who's quite eccentric and befuddled and always knocking things over and falling down and and making a mess of things a very bright woman who's just determined to to have young jack this little boy in the story realize his his dreams go after his dreams and believe in himself your name's jack yeah don't wear it out <sighs> history repeats itself what are you talking about there is a giant at the top of that beanstalk yeah, right, yeah, you, you do know you're whack, right? And young Jack is always inventing things and has great plans for all sorts of things. And I come into his life having discovered this beanstalk and tracked it down to his backyard. And as he, uh, uh, he ends up, of course, climbing the beanstalk and the giants chase him. And, and uh, he, he saves this town. But I, my, my role, I think, is to be the voice of, um, the voice of dreams, the voice of of people keeping alive that wonderful imagination that says they can go anywhere and do anything. Jack! What, what? I hope you didn't wake the giant. Oh, boy. We woke him. It's a giant! You people look like ants! My theories are correct! I remember it, when I first read the script, I thought, oh, this is a huge budget movie, obviously. This is, I mean, this is how are they going to do this? This is really complicated stuff, having been used to Superman and blue backing and all of that sort of thing. In fact, Michael uh, was brilliantly figured out ways to, to trick the eye. They were done partly through the camera, 
partly with simply making miniatures and then things greater than life and getting your perspective right. It was such a joy working on a movie that was full of that sort of spirit of let's make it believable for, for kids and let's make it fun and, and let's make it funny and believable for us. If anyone actually got smart with movies that appealed to both children and their parents and, and, and dealt with children as if they were uh, more intelligent and able to absorb things on a deeper level than just boff, hit, crash, boom, bang, like the Saturday morning cartoons, then, then they'd do very well. Well, Jack, <gasps> I'm off to hunt Bigfoot. The idea of having Doc Winston do a whole bunch of movies is a, a, a little bit of heaven. I would love to be recognized now as Doc Winston and, and be able to collaborate again with Michael and see what else we can have Doc Winston get into. I've always wanted to do just flat out comedy and I had a wonderful time. away from the world he knew. I'm tired, don't be afraid. Young John McGowan went home. His parents recently passed away. He's to be handed over to his grandfather. To a family he never met. Grandpa. Johnny. And to a castle. Welcome home, John McGowan. To the land of your forefathers. Filled with magic. You see this tree? It's a wishing tree. Touch it. Make a wish. I wish I had a friend. But when his wish came true... This is the wee baby dragon. A part of the McGowan legend <coughs> became part of the McGowan family. How do you house train a dragon? <coughs> Put the reptile off the sofa. Don't you be looking at me like that. The fairy folk have given you a dragon, lad. Can I keep it? You must keep the McGowan land, a haven for it. Protect it from the outside world. Now, years later, the special friendship they've shared. Good boy is threatened by an unexpected visit from the outside world. This one's not even on the map, sir. I sure hope the owners don't mind us trespassing like this. Set up right here. Oh, my God. Very funny, you guys. That's great stuff for the gag reel. Dragon! You're right, sir. Does that thing belong to you, son? John is forced to choose between the only home he knows. They say we owe them 170,000 pounds. And if we don't pay the money within 30 days, they're going to take McGowan Castle away from us. And the only friend he has. What if we were to bring the dragon to civilization? Put it on display. Just for a limited engagement, you name it. We make enough money to satisfy the tax folks. Everybody come out of this winner. Moonbeam Entertainment presents... We welcome you to Dragon World! A classic family fable. I intend to exercise my option to extend the contract. You can't do that. I can do anything I damn well please. If I have a broken heart. A thrilling new adventure. A fire breathing. Ah! High flying tale of excitement. Stop them! Fantasy. Go! And wonder. Dragon World. Moonbeam Entertainment invites you to take home something different. Trimble, is that you? Something wondrous. Geisel? Something magical, warm, and fuzzy. <laughs> and there's only one place you can find them. So open the door already! Pet Shop. This summer, owning a pet is out of this world. Is he too cute or what? Randy had the world at his fingertips. But just when he had it all in control... Things took a turn for the worse. School called. When I get home, young man, I'm going to confiscate every model in the house. Three men suspected of robbing a local convenience store are still at large tonight. Police warned that the three should be considered armed and dangerous. 
I've never known anyone who got expelled before. My mom's threatening to confiscate every model in the house. So I'm taking him to the hideout until things cool down. He was about to find out what real trouble was all about. Wow, this is a real pretty house. How long we got a hole up here? So the cops give up on the roadblocks three, four days, maybe. Now he's matching wits with three outlaws who are about to outwit themselves. No! Oh! Error by error. Strike the spark in the air for you guys. Blunder oh! by blunder. Come quick, someone's coming. Don't worry, kid, we're not going to hurt you. Oh, no, no, look, they got the army after us! And blow by blow. You gotta be pretty smart to get away from Louie, kid. Ah, oh, He's teaching the bad guys just how far a kid will go. Ah! Ah! Remote. A comedy powered by adventure.